to help them advance. I mean, do you think this is a conspiracy? Got to go with Jacob Butter. Got to go <laughs> no, left. We're, we're talking about the players. That's tournament champion right. into the podcast. There he is right there. Oh, he doesn't even know how to watch. Go to YouTube.com and search <laughs> Down Lane Podcast. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Down Lane Podcast. We are streaming live from the lab at Town & Country Lanes. I'm your host, Kyle Haynes, and with me is the producer what's going on here the producer austin van buren is in the house what's up buddy not much man it, it's it's weird being over here yeah on i'm camera. used to, i'm used to looking at you guys to the right so i don't know if my neck's gonna be able to do the whole <laughs> to the left thing so uh anthony is uh he might still be on a plane we're not sure but he is flying to miami he's somewhere yeah he's uh on his way to miami um, to enjoy uh, his cousin Nick's bachelor party, um, to which I wasn't invited. I think we're gonna have more fun. I really do. Yeah, agreed. We're gonna uh, we're gonna talk on the podcast. We're gonna go bowl it up a little bit. Yeah, you don't have to. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, yeah, he's uh, going to Miami for a bachelor party. Nick's getting married. Nick from Canada. Um, and we uh, are super jealous and sad that we weren't invited. So uh, thanks, Nick, and you suck. Um, but congratulations <laughs> on uh, on getting married. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, click the bell to get alerts from the channel. You can uh, always share with your friends. Uh, we uh, love when you do that. Um, and don't forget to check out our latest videos. We just released our uh, uh, guide to building your 2022 open championships arsenal so you can check that out on our youtube channel um it's a quick uh i say quick it's about a 15 minute video but it goes over a bunch of different bowling balls you can choose from uh before you head out to the ocs which start saturday yeah crazy yeah crazy i've yeah, been yeah, seeing yeah. stuff on facebook pictures yeah, people are getting ready it's awesome i love that place um and don't forget uh you can catch us on your favorite podcast outlet if you can't watch on youtube um and uh, always check us out on uh, our Etsy page for some merch. If you guys want some shirts um, or backpacks or hats or whatever. And uh, no problem, Carl. You're welcome for getting the shirts uh, over in the UK. Um, they got us, uh, made us, Carl made us yeah. uh, some sweet uh, bowling ball cups for Did our spare balls. We yeah, I sent, a picture yeah on, uh, I sent a picture on Instagram. Um, I need to get a new sweatshirt. Yes. Dude, you destroyed that thing at work. You can't even read it anymore. Hey, listen. Once it becomes a work sweatshirt, it's a work sweatshirt. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. I did try soaking it in the bathtub, the old school method with like borax and stuff. Didn't touch it. I was gonna say probably <laughs> this is probably nasty ring around there. It was not. But fun. yeah, I had to clean. Yeah. That, for yeah. anybody that doesn't know, Austin's like a mechanic basically for for uh, machines, and uh, yeah, uh, it was destroyed. Yeah, that yeah. sweatshirt. Um. So yeah. 
Uh, all right. And don't forget, you guys can comment to us during the show. Uh, we will take your comments on air. We will uh, chat with you guys, all that good stuff. Um, and yeah, let's get into it here. So on today's episode, we've got a few things to get to. Um, first and foremost, we're going to talk about Missouri Baptist uh, 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 athletic team or bowling team, excuse me, um, getting locked out of the intercollegiate team championships um, coming up here. Uh, so we'll get into that a little bit. We're gonna, we got some more urethane talk, uh, some more news coming out of USBC, banning that from national tournaments. We'll talk about that. Um, and then, of course, uh, we've got PBA talk. We've got crazy. Yeah, lots of PBA talk. Crazy. Um, and then uh, Bowler of the Week coming up later on. So uh, let's get into it. Uh, how was your week this week? I always ask Anthony. My week was great. You know, how was man. your week this week? My, week? my week was great. You know, I work all week, so... You know, I did not bowl Monday because of Sunday, which was a grind. Uh, yeah. So uh, for those that may not know, we have a 64-man bracket tournament here, uh, always at the beginning of March. Um, maybe it's related to March Madness. I guess it probably yeah, is. But uh, it is a ridiculous tournament for many reasons, uh, all for good reasons. But, like, yeah. it is – if you make it through, you know, for the guys that get knocked out early, not such a grind. If you make it through all day like you did – it yeah. is what'd you bowl 13 games or something 11 11 games. 11 yeah. games and i had two breaks of 20 minutes each yeah if you're not game two and game three if you are not used to a marathon like that which most bowlers don't even bowl 11 no. games not no. even the big guys you know what i mean if you're not used to bowling 11 games eight games five games yeah uh you are going to get wiped out. Right? And that's without any lunch break. That's without <laughs> any. Come on, man. you got to give mean, them a little break, bit of a lunch and, break. And the, here. Cra the crazy thing is the only people who really get the breaks are the are the guys in the winner's bracket. Right. True. Uh, yeah. That's the only time I got the breaks, obviously, because the loser's bracket, you're going to have more people in as the rounds go on. And and uh, I was lucky enough to get through three rounds before I got the loser's bracket. So I saved myself four or five games yeah. probably. But uh, once you get in the loser's bracket, it's kind of just. Throw it, throw it the best you can and hope for the best. Yeah. I mean, I think if I had to guess, seven out of the 11 games were within 15 pins for me. I mean, every nice. every match was close, uh, which was nice. I like that aspect of bowling where you have the matches where it's like, oh, no, I it could go either way. Sure. You know, it's up to your shot making right. to decide the game. And uh, a couple fell my way, obviously couple didn't but, uh... <laughs> well yeah so austin finished second uh in the bracket which is uh again it's a long day so kudos to you that was great bowling um phil james kudos uh, to phil. yeah i mean this guy survived the winner's bracket uh all the way I through mean, i tried to give him a run i tried yeah but he was just yeah so you beat him the first had... game because you you had to win twice yes i the... beat him the first game in the in the, and, uh, in the final match the right lane on the second game, just fried. It was torched on the right mean, lane, on the right side. It, the ball read at 30 feet no matter where you placed it, and it was going left. And uh, Phil has the benefit of having a little less rev rate, so he could control that Listen, a we better. all have a little less rev rate uh, when it comes to being against you, okay? <laughs> uh, but it's just it, no excuses. The execution could have been there, but – it was a good tournament. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm happy with the way it turned out. Uh, and Phil definitely deserved it. 300, 800 yeah. for the first three. And not just that. So, and that's little, not on the same pair. How about this? That's, a little bit of backstory about Phil's 300, 800. So, Phil's first 300, Phil's first 800, and uh, he practiced on the wrong pair for the first. That's Phil's, I think that's Phil's second 300. Oh, second 300. Second my, 300 my, my bad, Phil. I got that wrong. Okay, second first 800. Yeah, and yep. uh, second 300. My bad. So, but he practiced on the wrong pair. Yeah, for the yeah, first yeah, game, yeah. he read yeah. his seating for wh where he thought he had to practice. Yep. So he read like uh, I don't know. He was seated, I'll say seventh or something. Yep. And but his pair, so he started he practicing on, on seven and, and eight. He was on five and six. Yeah. <laughs> What's even crazier is his opponent, who he bowled against, fired a two seventy nine and lost. Oh you don't God. throw two seventy nine in a tournament very often. Oh lose. my goodness! Yeah, it's crazy, <laughs> absolutely crazy. Um, but yeah, so uh, uh, great tournament. Phil definitely deserved the win because he just he basically mowed down the competition. I don't know if he had a lot of handicap 
you know, ter- matches no. or not, but he definitely bowled um, great all day. Um, you know, I think he was pretty, he probably was pretty even all day long. Uh, if I had to guess. Yeah. Um, I know I got that. I was very fortunate. The first five matches I gave up no more than five pins. And that's like coming from a guy who only gets four pins in handicap. Uh, that's a blessing in a handicap huh. tournament because you're pretty yeah. much bowling scratch in your favor. Yeah. 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 You don't get any extra love. Um, I couldn't bowl because uh, I was at uh, Zach's More very first things. bowling tournament, which was more than exciting for me um also very stressful believe it or not because uh it like in all reality it doesn't it doesn't mean anything right like he's not like he's seven years old so right that's what i mean but like we're definitely more stressed than him oh yeah 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 he like he likes to bowl good he, he and whatever but i am the one that cares way too much about yeah. good he's about yeah. how good he's yeah. doing and like and like I'm, I'm trying to coach him, but I'm also trying to not coach him too much, and like trying to stay back as much as possible. And like me and my dad are both like, "All right, you got to move a little left, and you got to da 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 da." And it's like, and Stephanie's like, "Shut up!" You're telling me Bobby was there? <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, it, it was uh, you know, it was hard to to watch that. The other thing it was like they put all of the same average kids on the same pair. So the whole tournament is really? done, and all of the kids that average ninety are still bowling. Are bowling oh for God. three hours or yeah. three and a half hours. It was like, could we not put eight kids all in one pair? That yeah. That... I mean, I guess in some aspects it's nice because the guys who you know are a little oh yeah. I just mean they should have spread them out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. they should have put. I definitely understand that. Three, but three I will be something. honest. Yeah. If I'm in a tournament and I'm paired with someone who is a smaller, oh, yeah, it throws me off. Yeah, yeah. No, agreed. I'm not saying the seven year old should have been with a. 15 year old i'm just saying they should have spread the the little guys Did they out have more room yeah there was an empty pair to the left of us what were they yeah. doing i don't know i don't know no, you better get on the commission over there yeah yeah sure yep 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 yep. you need more on your plate right <laughs> um so as we mentioned saturday is uh the start of the open championships in las vegas um and i just can't hold in my excitement anymore uh, I did. <laughs> did you practice last night i couldn't make it last night i've been just too busy at home I, it, it also snowed up here so i was plowing my driveway which yeah. i have like a 300 yard driveway so uh that takes a little bit of my time um and uh but no so i didn't make it last night i heard uh, they practiced on the doubles pattern from last year it played pretty tough so um you know we we tend to practice a lot here um for our team yeah we're it, start, it's starting to get there I definitely gotta start showing up more. Yeah. There was snow on the ground. My car was not moving. <laughs> no, your, your little Honda. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I said uh, earlier in the open, um, don't forget check out our ball guide, our commentary from last year. We have a couple of videos out right now. We have our ball guide for this year, uh, our commentary from our 2021 team performance. So check those out to help you guys out for this year's uh, upcoming event, so that you can get prepped and ready to go, and also get practicing. You know what I mean? That's what we do. We practice a lot um, just to get ourselves ready for this one event. It is like it is the best event in sports. I mean, what other sport allows thirty five thousand plus people participant participants, uh, you know, from all over the country uh, to participate in the same tournament? You know what I mean? Like, there, yeah, there's not the top one. Top of my head, can't name anything. Not one. So, I'm sure there's something in a foreign country where they let the whole country come and do it. Maybe. I don't know if cricket has it or <laughs> I don't know. But I don't, I don't think there's I don't think a. I've ever thought about cricket. So I, it's the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> <laughs> which they also call bowling, by the way, which is really interesting. Yeah. I think it's cricket. Sure. I like my bowling better. Maybe our buddies from the UK can help us with that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. The, by the way, coming back July, end of I July, see that. Or August. I see that. I love it. Which is the week that I go on vacation, so uh, nice. we'll see if we can meet up. But um, yeah, so like it is just it's crazy. Like you, you know, everybody's bowling the same tournament. You know, you're bowling on as close as you can, the same conditions. Um, it's just a unique experience for sure, and it's just you know for people. The other thing too is you know for the us amateurs that don't get to experience 
the big time, if you will. That level all the time. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like that experience. You go into the squad room and there's a meeting and I then think they're, they're 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 testing or not testing, but they're verifying your equipment. Um and you know, they're verifying your paperwork and all this good stuff. That doesn't happen on a regular no, basis when you go no. to a, a, a local tournament, no, uh, honestly, more or less. You know, what if I, mean? I saw that on a local tournament, I'd walk out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be here all day long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. But practice, practice on that stuff, especially for your team last year. Yeah, I mean, your team was by far the most coherent when it came to practice scheduling and practicing the same thing, and learning how to bowl as a team, and it showed off. I mean, it paid off. Yeah, it showed definitely showed. Um, as you can see in the video, if anyone watched it, um, by the way, that was more of a watch party, not really like a commentary. Yeah. I guess that's a good point. We were just, <laughs> just sitting there watching and commenting and besides, yeah. besides the point, um, <laughs> I definitely think about if, if you were someone that wants to practice on it, you need to find that group in your area that yeah. is dedicated to practicing on stuff like that and get in there and practice even if it's not the nationals type shots right something Get close some practice on something like harder something harder that it makes you think more right um and not only think more it makes you want to be better shot you know? make make your um, spares and a lot of people need to see that oh there's not room like a house shot <laughs> what right uh i know when i started bowling in the harder tournaments it was like wow okay this know, is different. this makes sense now yeah, yeah, yeah this makes sense this is why everyone practices yeah and i know um, there's a lot of teams out there too um that <clears throat> actually meet out there so like yep. they're not from the same area yeah, yeah, yeah. so it may be hard for them to practice as a team but at least getting the practice of yeah, bowling on those shots fun. Um, maybe form a team locally to practice with, I don't know, so that you can break down the lanes as best you can and then get together and if... then, um, you know, try to try to emulate or not emulate, but uh, recreate that. Yeah. Try to uh, have a game plan because I'll tell you, having a game plan as a team is the only way to bowl uh, as a team. You, you can't go out there as five individual players bowling different games. Um, not to win not to win right not to win because i mean you'd have to be five extremely good bowlers right you'd have to be all five pba players and be or team usa players or whatever and just be great yeah extremely talented um all right so let's move on to the next big story here uh we got the um missouri baptist bowling team uh had a very very um unfortunate incident happen um where they were entering their information for the intercollegiate team championships. Um, and they, th so there's a deadline to have your information postmarked by February 1st, right? Yep. yep. So they put their mail into the Dropbox. Didn't get picked up till after. So, so the USBC calls them like in the middle of February. They're like, Hey, we don't have your stuff. Did you send that? <laughs> they, we don't have your stuff. You're uh, not disqualified, but you're you're not eligible to enter. And uh, wow. yeah, so they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. we we sent it's it sad, January man. 28th and uh, come to find out they went to the post office. That exact Dropbox was like vandalized. The mail was stolen, etc. cetera. So. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I messaged with Don Griffin, the head coach this afternoon. Um, and so, uh, the official statement is, let me, let's bring it up here, uh, back on the, the other page Ooh, there. I think oh, I have it, it on there. there. Maybe I did. Is that it? Got it. Yep, we yeah. Got it. So the official statement from the Missouri Baptist university is we don't completely agree with the decision made by the USBC. We understand that the importance of the eligibility, eligibility deadlines and how difficult it must be to remove any team from the postseason play due to eligibility compliance it is our opinion that the extenuating circumstances and the evidence that we shared supporting our claims should have been enough to warrant further consideration and ultimately inclusion in postseason play upon our review and investigation we believe that we had initially met all established compliance guidelines to assure that this experience is not repeated we are reviewing the policies and practices to ensure that future eligibility compliance will be met so, wow. Yeah. You're telling me USBC heard that story and 
wouldn't let them resend in their eligibility forms? Right. So I, uh, again, I spoke with wow. Don. I'll get to Don's comments. So since you brought up the USBC, I did email uh, Chad Murphy from the USBC. He uh, had me get in contact with um, uh, Mike Spridco. He's the senior director of rules and compliance. Mm -hmm. And they he sent me very lengthy statement i'll paraphrase it because it's very very long wow. um yeah uh austin sees it it's super long so basically um uh it was de deemed ineligible they were deemed ineligible because of those reasons they, they got the they didn't get the information in time um and basically it comes down to the fact that they weren't um here, I'll, I'll read the last paragraph. Uh, while the information provided by Missouri Baptist indicated theft of some of the deposited mail from an outside mail receptacle sometime on January 28, 2022, there remains no irrefutable evidence the forms were part of the mail that may have been stolen. Had the school been able to provide a receipt showing acceptance of this parcel by USPS or another shipper prior to the February 1st deadline, there may have been sufficient evidence to allow for the submission of the missing documents after the deadline. The tracking of forms is a key reason why schools send documents certified mail and why USBC Collegiate recommends the forms sent, be sent certified. So uh the, i will read this last statement while we feel bad for the athletes of missouri baptist usbc must remain consistent in enforcing the rules um so uh yeah the well, it, one, go ahead one of the irrefutable evidence be usps saying that exact dropbox so the, i mean i guess i understand like you can't prove it was there because it, it doesn't exist anymore it was right stolen. The, the, if that's the case the piece of mail was stolen, stolen. stolen right um but at the same time, when have you ever walked into USPS, sent something, and got a receipt, and been like, I'm keeping this? When you send something certified, you get a receipt. So they clearly didn't send it certified. Well, if right. they put it in a Dropbox, it wasn't certified. Exactly. Um, so that that's the thing. On, on their on their form, supposedly, it says that you know they recommend that it be certified mail. Um, I... Couldn't they do this an easier way? I mean, isn't there so like it's this, it's 2022 it's Gmail, right? Is that what they call it? <laughs> it it's 2022. I don't know if I've ever used it. The I, I will I will tell you my experience in setting up the teams for national for OCs Nobody for open teams. championships. Well, there's email. Let's separate the problem with the email. But when we set up the stuff for open championships, there's an entire online form for us to fill out. You do your green sheets online. Yep. You do your team entries online. Everything is filled out online it's through, their service. through USBC. Yep. So, so you know, I don't know what the reason is. Uh, I didn't get that reason from USBC, why everything is still done by paper. But it seems a little antiquated. So, you know, I do, under, I do know that uh, coming up, I believe when um, Mike Larson was on the, the podcast, uh, couple weeks ago i believe he alluded to saying something like uh the tournament uh entries uh are going to be more widely available through the usbc yes, website I do vaguely remember him saying that so there might perhaps be the intercollegiate team championships system. will be available through there Hopefully. as well but that would to me i would think eliminate part of this problem you know the internet has been around for a little bit of time now yeah. i don't know why we're sending paper documents um and we still do it for the state tournament yeah. We just did it for the New York State Masters that we went to, um, which, uh, uh, speaking of which, a little side note, Anthony uh, bowled pretty well last weekend. Um, I have not talked to him about it. Uh, yeah, he made match play last week. Um, that's a little side note. Wait, um, I did talk to him about it. I know that. He bowled 115, 130 pins over, first qualifying five games, uh, second place. Uh, you know, he's left-handed, 40 feet, you know. <laughs> no, he bowled really good. Was the left walled? be honest no 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 it wasn't so it wasn't well it was a tough shot 40 so feet yeah right. 40 feet two and a half to good. one he said yeah. both good so my, my my whole thing is you know it's there there's a it's not that it's anybody's fault because obviously this bad thing happened that was uncontrollable by anybody except for the criminal that caused the problem but and this this vaguely sounds similar to a situation last year when uh, a certain pba player forgot oh yeah his registration is. right that was self-inflicted, though. And showed up the bowl. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, Austin's referring to Kyle Sherman. Uh, um, yeah, when he uh, posted his video about how he forgot to enter. What tournament was that? I forget. 
One of the small ones. Yeah. Okay. One of, the, one of like the <laughs> city named tournaments. Okay. So I spoke, like I said, I, I messaged with Don Griffin, the head coach uh, of Missouri Baptist University. Um, you know, and he confirmed, he, you know, we, we postmarked uh, and mailed the forms on January 28th. Uh, they got the notice from USBC uh, on February 14th that they were ineligible. They appealed it, uh, I believe, three times, um, and each time it wasn't. Uh, um, they let them appeal it three times. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sent two more they appeals. Were really, they were really patient with it. Then. Yeah, I mean, they really tried to make it work. I, I'm sure that they did. I'm sure. I mean, why would they want to? Why would the, I'm speaking they with the USBC? Why would the USBC want to? Especially intercollegiate. Right. Yeah. Cut these kids out of the tournament. Right. Yeah. The, the the only fault that I'm I'm kind of putting onto the USBC is how they're sending put paper. it all on the internet. Yeah, it's right. Way it faster. should be on the website. It's faster, easier. Right. Everything can be saved. If a player is there for three years, it doesn't have to be filled out three times. Right. And so the other thing uh, um, Coach Griffin said was, you know, even if this decision remains, which he you know thinks it is, um, you know, he hopes that you know they'll be able to influence a change in the system, hopefully like online. Um, so that this doesn't happen to any other athletes or coaches or teams ever again. Um, and they do have a petition uh, on change.org, which you can find in our show notes. Um, so if you want to go Those ahead and sign tough, that, man. yeah, I don't Those know if they do anything, but it, well, it's tough because if you force the USBC into doing it with money or signatures or something like that, then you're running into uh integrity i know that word's hot in the pba right mm -hmm. now um and uh i mean obviously i support the college bowling i think that was one of the best experiences the i've ever had yeah the situation that happened man it's just like if you make an ex if you make an exception is it really hurting something you know are people are there schools that are really going to take advantage of it right um and then again Obviously, there's going to be schools to take advantage of. Right. But are they going to be the top tier teams that you're worried about? Right. Um, yeah, I, I can see how they would say something, like the USPC would say something to the effect, well, you know, if we let this go through, and I'm not saying, again, that they did anything wrong, but if they let this go through, then will teams more situations? Will teams let it slip by and say, yep. oh, uh, I don't know what happened, you know? It. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, 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 exactly. So she, she left it in the car. Right. Something like that. Right. Yeah, I... Right. It it's, just it's it just really sucks. Yeah, First it just really all, sucks. Yeah. Don't people know nobody sends anything in the mail anymore? Like, Except garbage. I get junk mail you, all of the why time. Why are you robbing <laughs> Dropbox? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're talking about the criminal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can have my nobody bills. Sends does the guy want my bills? Yeah. You can have my bills all day. You can pay him. Yeah. Anytime you. What want. does that guy think is going to be inside? Yeah. There? He just wants the credit yeah. card so he can guess your social security number when he tries to set it up. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't know what that guy was thinking. Um. All right. So yeah, like I said, sorry to those folks on the team. Sorry to Coach Griffin. That really, really sucks. Uh, hopefully, they can come to something that they, they are able to bowl in the. The singles championship, though, so they'll be at the tournament, but not as a team. So I don't know how that works. I didn't, I didn't get into that Whoa. portion of it, but yeah, I don't know. Something to do with averages, maybe for the team. I don't know. I don't know. Um. All right, so let's move on to the World Series of Bowling. Uh, a lot of big scores. Yeah, a lot of big scores. A lot of bowling. A lot of small scores. Just a lot of bowling. Did you see Ronnie Russell? I forgot which. Uh, pattern it was i think it was it was the cheetah i think he goes 128 the first game makes the cut <laughs> it's only five I, games of qualifying or 10 games ten, of qualifying ten, right five yeah. five in the five morning five, lunch yeah. break five um <laughs> that's crazy crazy i mean guy went lights out cheetah's always um, I, i'm surprised that he shot 120 because cheetahs are usually the highest scoring pattern yeah, yeah and uh there was a ton of 300s a ton yeah a ton um the shark was another good one i've heard yeah, I was watching a little bit of it today, and uh, from the um, replay, and uh, it's fun to watch because it's a long pattern. The shark, yeah, and uh, they, it playing. looks like they're just throwing it straight down they, the middle yep, of the lane, trying not to fade it too far. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly right. The yeah. best is watching Norm Duke pull on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. He's good, and he's. Uh, did he make any cuts? Just, it's crazy. Him and Parker were both out yeah, there. You know, a couple of old guys. Just uh, we have the cuts. Oh yeah, yeah. Anthony uh, sent us the cuts. But yeah, so uh, I know Kyle's out there. He made a uh, uh, Kyle Troop. 
uh, I think he led the shark, right? Um, no, Pontus Anderson led shark. Led sh- okay, um, that's right. That old old Pontus. That's right. I forgot. Um, and then uh, let's see who else did good. I can't remember. My memory sucks. Kyle Troop was um, Scorpion. Score. He led Scorpion. Okay. Uh, Belmonte squeezed in there, man. Squeezed in there by seven pins. It doesn't seem like he had bowled well all this week. Uh, I was watching the Brad and Kyle video, and in the beginning, he was talking to Brad about how to score early on Shark. <laughs> and Brad said, talk to Kyle. Do, so, do you think that he was just being a... He might have been a little bit of a smart ass. ass. I mean, <laughs> like, he, is, he is the old guy. No right, offense like, to him. He's the old guy on tour now. Yeah. He's up there. Yeah, he's, yeah. With, he's with the old guys now. Yeah. So, I mean... And that's just because of how many years he's been. Plus, he's, like, he's not do you that think, old, is he? Here's another. I think he's, he's in his forties. Yeah, right? he's in his forties. Do you think like there's a little bit of uh, mind game action going on there, where like you get Belmo to walk up to you, you got a, you got like a double or a triple, and he goes, he walks up to you, and he's like, "Hey, uh, how do I, how do I start scoring on this thing?" And like all of a sudden, your mind shifts to like, "Oh crap, Belmo just asked me how to score, and now, now you got your your knees are knocking, and like." There's, there's no way uh, uh, Belmo just asked me how to score, right? Like, there's got to be some mind games going on there. Uh, Joey D. Yes. Dave, um, Jake jo- Buttriff, from what I can see, may be the only person to make all three. I want to verify that, though. Um, I'm pretty sure that's correct. And Joey D. just sent me uh, that Belmonte is sitting fifth after this morning's block. Really? Um, yep. Wow. So yeah, a lot of the, the World Series of bowling is just crazy, and, oh. it, and it ends with um, Kyle Sherman. I got something. If I'm ever at that house, I want to bowl on. It was either I think it was either 43, 44, oh, yeah, or 45, shot. and 46. First two games on that pair, perfect for both. It's like nine and ten for me and Anthony. <laughs> I, I do not have a good lane here anymore. No, they took it away. Ever since they put full <laughs> synthetic in, seven and eight sucks. Oh. That's all I had. Stop your whining. <laughs> Listen, I don't have 11 300s this year yet. I'm not oh, happy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, my I goodness. I hit the pocket all the time, Kyle. Why don't I str- – <laughs> We talked about that weeks ago, all right? Tune into the, that podcast. I didn't watch. Sorry, I wasn't watching. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. All right. So, uh, so yeah, a lot of – it's just uh, – so, I think the shows are all, like, the next five weekends or something or four, three or four weekends. It's a lot of time. I know they got – Because it's all the animal the, patterns and then the – uh, World versus U- – U.S. versus World. Oh, right. Um, that, that's got to come up. Obviously, the World Series of Bowling Finals. Yep. Uh, isn't there a couple other small things in there that they do? I think just the animal patterns and then – I could be wrong. I just – it's too much going on. Too much Too much to, a lot of to think about. A handed around. That's right. That's what I know. Not as much as there should be. I'm not getting any. <laughs> you got to be out there, man. Got to be in it to win it. I, listen, I can barely bowl 11 games. <laughs> I can't do 10 five days in a row. That's crazy. 10 games a day. That's nuts. Although the lunch break may be it. That that's all may you need. Be the key. So you need a little bit of lunch break. Maybe the key. Snickers? You hungry? <laughs> I, I had a bite of Snickers. That's it. That's I right. told everyone I was going to eat a Snickers because I hadn't eaten all day and I ate one bite. That's all you needed. I threw out the rest. <laughs> felt bad about it. All right, let's get to the next piece of big news, which uh <clears throat> excuse me, which is a continuation from last week. So, from last week, we found out the PBA was uh banning 2-year-old urethanes every year. The previous 2-year urethanes would be banned, all urethanes, not just purple hammers or anything. Yeah. So then when we had Jeff Riggles on last week, he's telling us all about uh, the inside stories the about science. that, and uh, yeah, he's a knowledgeable dude, right? Jeff Riggles. Um, and then, um, then he tells us about the Mitch Beasley story and when yep. he worked at EBI and how the uh, there was a bad employee some weird there, going on in, yeah, you know? let some stuff go, uh, and had a, a line of purple hammers, uh, or a bunch of purple hammers get off the line that were too soft, six, seven, right, from the 16 and 17 era, um. Which then, uh, well, we'll back up a, a second here. Um, so when that Facebook post from Mitch Beasley originally came out, the USBC put out a statement, uh, again, paraphrasing, and not don't have it right out in front of me, but essentially said that they had no known uh, knowledge. knowledge of any situation. Uh, right. Yep. Um, so they any were soft. unaware of the situation, right, um, of any known illegal bowling balls coming from the plant. 
fast forward, uh, they do a full investigation. Uh, and now all uh, 16, 17, or we'll call them Series 6, Series 7, Purple Hammers are illegal at national tournaments, uh, sanctioned national tournaments for the USBC. My I question mean, is... I- Butterf made him look pretty good that year. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> well, he's he's uh, he's been tweeting all week about <laughs> it's the bowl or not the ball. Because uh, apparently, I don't know. Was it seventeen resin. when he won all those things? <laughs> Fair enough. It was but, all with purple hand. I know, but uh, he uh, he has been using some resin. He was showing, so yeah. that's, that's why yeah. uh, he was saying it's the bowl or not the ball. He did kind of allude one time that resin just hooks too much for him. Yeah, I forget where I saw it. It was in someone's video. Or it might have been on a Facebook video of him, okay. but he was throwing some resin ball to show it off. And uh, boy, he can hook the lane. Let me tell you, you he's think that, I can hook the he's lane? Get that ridiculous hand action that just I don't like know how he does it. I don't do get wrist, it, man. How does your wrist not break? It, well, he's like quadruple jointed well, or something. Well, yeah, like, I don't know. The ball's hanging over his wrist <laughs> like that. Like I have to force it. It hurts my hand looking at this it. spot. Yeah, yeah, like, it hurts looking at I've it. I've seen a couple people do it. There's, yeah. there's a couple guys around here that do it. Not, not to the ability he does it, yeah. but just ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Um, so uh so anyway, uh I did reach out to the USBC to find out, you know, why did they go tournament ban versus blanket ban? Because to me, my personal opinion would be if a ball's illegal, the ball's illegal. Mm-hmm. Not illegal at, not just illegal at a tournament, it's illegal to out there too. And, you know, all they said was, you know, here's our press release uh, and kind of that's what we have to say about it. I don't know if they want to force EBI and Brunswick to restock all those bundles. Well, Brunswick already voluntarily did. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're, they already did a voluntary recall and anybody with a six, seven can come purple and get a new one. can send it in and you get nice. a, a ball of your choice. It doesn't have to be a purple. It can be any ball you want. Wow. Yeah. That's bold. Yeah. So kudos to Brunswick for um, taking that step. That was great of them. Who's the right way to do it? Yeah. Um, and uh, I was going to say, it's hard for the USBC to force that. But it's but it's not. I mean, you like the USGA took out belly putters, right? So you got to go buy a new putter. That's could be anywhere from 100 to 200. I don't know how much putters are. Yeah, but did they force the companies to reimburse that person? Or did the company say, I don't care. It was legal when we sold it. That I don't know. I guess not, right? This is a different situation here. Yeah. Because the balls were flat out illegal. I don't know the last time a golf club was ever deemed illegal. Like, well, made illegal at the time. Yeah, I have no clue. I have no Where's I know Justin when you need him? Yeah, just, yeah, Justin Hurley. We need you for some uh, golf information. <laughs> Next podcast. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, no, that's a good point. But um, the the thing is, though, if a ball to me again, if 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 a piece of equipment is illegal, it should be yeah, illegal exactly, um, regardless of how it's being or not how physically it's being used, but in what tournament or league or whatever, because league is competition. You know, yes, that's yeah. my that's my argument for pre bowling. If there's I mean, money, don't get me started if there's on money involved, but, it should be authentic. Yeah, no and matter what. yeah, just because it happens to be a Tuesday night and people have a few beers while they're bowling. It's still a competition, and there's still. I guess at the end of the day, maybe they were thinking how many people are throwing purple hammer in league, which I think they underestimate. I, I'm sure that they underestimate. There's, I'm sure there's plenty of them. I the second that I forget what ball, but it was. but think about how many people. Whatever what, that silver, the year the year thing ball your dad got. That's oh, geez, when the whole the year thing that? kicked. The BTU. Oh yeah, that's BTU, when the yep. whole year thing kick started coming back around. Yep, yep, yeah. Right that was four years that, ago. Yeah. And now, I mean, it was right like, after the people, six, people it was right after the house shots hammer. all day long. Yeah. I mean, I've thrown urethane on the burn house shot here. Yeah. A couple of, uh, after first three, four shot or first three, four games. Um, oh, it was after the first game. <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, the point I'm making though, is even at a local tournament, that is a sport shot. You'd be throwing a purple hammer and that's not a national tournament. Yeah. So, I mean, to the me, other thing I could think about is and I, I don't I'm sorry, I shouldn't just generalize purple hammer, by the way. It could still be a six from the seven, six, seven era. purple hammer. Um yeah. the only thing that I'd question is like your local tournaments, how often are they USBC sanctioned tournaments? 
Well, that's how often but, are they? But again, the that's place? not even the point. The point is, if but how would you see if they aren't USBC certified tournaments? How are they supposed? How could they possibly say this ball cannot be used? Well, most tournaments still say that they're following yes, USBC absolutely. rules. But so it, if the rule it's up states, to the, it's up to the tournament director and the staff right. of the tournament. And if the rule states that uh, they're following USBC rules, and the, the USBC rule, let's say for um, me wanting it this way, the USBC rule said that all none from that year, right? None from six. Then or seven. all those are illegal. Then no one can use that in that local tournament. Now, do you want a total blanket ban on all your thing? No, 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 or no. Just, just the, the just those, just whatever they for need league, to be too soft. Just, yeah, for league. I agree. Everything. Yeah. I if agree. it's illegal, it's illegal. That's my opinion. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, so that's that's you know where I lie in the USBC rules. Fun, right? Yeah, so uh, you guys may have seen our uh, Instagram and Twitter posts earlier. If you didn't follow us, you'll see everything. I uh, I was talking to Joey D last night, my brother-in-law, and uh, you purchased these last night. Oh yeah, this they is, got here today. This is the magic of Jeff Dude, Bezos. You're blowing our budget, man. Love them or hate them. Blowing our budget. Love them or hate them. Jeff Bezos got me these in 24 hours. <laughs> they come from um, no. Uh, so, uh, I got us here, uh, a couple of, uh, why don't you put a ball cup up here just so, um, it's a good surface, uh, handheld durometers. So the talk of the town is hardness folks, uh, bowling ball hardness. And, uh, we are, so I thought it'd be fun. Uh, and Jeff Riggles also messaged me and said, Hey, you guys should play with some durometers. So I thought it'd be a good idea. Let's test some bowling He's balls. He's a smart guy. And when uh, when Jeff was on the show the other day, he had mentioned to me because I made the comment. Which one is that? Uh, they're both the same, but they just read a little. Uh, have different more. readings. Gotcha. Um, so uh, I made the comment. Well, my black urethane is four years old. Um, I believe mine is four years old. But as well. you know, it's a seventy-eight hardness. There's no way. There's no way that it's going to read uh you know Lower below that, yeah. 70 right no so we brought i got uh we're gonna go i got our to a new hardness camera. tester here and we're gonna mess around with some different bowling balls we're gonna start here with the black hammer urethane and uh i'm just gonna punch this down you just push on it until it stops and there we go so this is austin's austin's is a few years old is it legal right here Boom, 74.5. I like this. I'm having fun with this I thing already. Right. So now you're supposed to punch these like 10 times in 10 different locations. Yeah, so nice and easy. Yep. What do you got? 72. 72. So yeah, we're we're good, man. We're good. Is, oh, Austin's that is one good. Just has a different uh screen. Different screen. All right. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's good. All right. Zero to all right. So let's try mine. So this one's awesome. What do you think yours Austin's is? also a little cold. So if you recall. Is this still cold? Yeah, it's yeah. a little cold. Which so, one you want? Your black yeah, one? yeah, yeah. So if you recall, um, the comment was also made that in the old days, sorry. Sorry, uh, when they were testing, guys would uh, keep bowling balls in the freezer and then have, you know, show up and make sure that, uh, um, you know, their, their balls would pass. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> That's why they stay in the trunk. And you're all supposed to do this in Secrets. the track. I'll take a cracked one over a hard one, you know? All right. I pass. There you go. But there sure. we go. 73.5. What do you got on me? 77.5. 77.5. Whoa. So we should see this is why you do it 10 times yeah. and average it. 10 times an average. So again, it all depends. I'm gonna I'm gonna re repunch mine. This all depends on uh who the person is. Who is pay, if you're paying attention? See, I just got a 69. That's another thing, too. Um, it, it could also be different locations of the ball. Well, right. That, yeah, exactly. What did you just I get? I just got a 68 in the same spot. See, so we got a 70. So what did you say? 70. I had 77. 77. I had a 70. Top of the ball in your track. Was yeah. that in your track? Uh, I, th I think it was in the track. Yeah, I, I've been doing it all along my track yep. here. So, so down here is softer. Right. Now, could that also have to do with which way the ball sat as it was carrying. Jeez, I have no idea. You're, you're talking way over. Am I getting head. into things you're See, not ready for? Yeah. So I let's do that one again because I lifted it before I hit the stop button. Where's Jeff? Get Jeff back. <laughs> Come on, Jeff. Where are you? Oh, you gotta be good. Man, at, Anthony missed the fun episode, man. Yeah. 
See, there we go. Got we got new tools. Now. 74. In the same spot. All right. Now let's find some fun balls here. I got 77.5. Again. There we go. So I would say that this ball still falls in the realm of oh, wow, that camera looks hard good cover. That yeah. All right. Let's switch. Should, Should we switch to a purple? Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's switch to a purple. So uh, we'll bring the drama. Austin, Austin brought us a purple. Now not this, mine. This, I do not own one. This is uh, Austin's dad's art. Uh, art through this about maybe for four games total maybe. and never use it again mostly a spare ball if any. <laughs> but it is two years old because it's a 2020 yes so all right i'm gonna find his track he's a lefty don't forget yeah all right here we go let's drop the punch Again, I want to put the disclaimer out here. These we are not scientists, and nor are these scientific instruments. And we could be doing this wrong, right? But I just got a sixty-three on this one. So mine registers harder every time. All I've right. noticed. That. Maybe you're just stronger than me. I mean, I'm not pushing down that hard. Are you using both hands? Yeah. I got sixty-nine point five. Right, there we go. Sixty-six. Sixty-six, and you got a sixty-nine. So I'll do a second one here. I got seventy point five on that one. Wow. So. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Use I did one. not take a class on Try this one. using the thermometer. All right, let's switch. And I'm going to use this one. Maybe it is you. Maybe you got to work the forearms out more. <laughs> Maybe I'm just... Oop. You might be holding down too long. Is that a thing? Could be. Because you might, you might be indenting it far enough that it... Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I got a 69 on that one. Because I'm see what I'm doing is I'm going down the second I hit yep. the ground, I'm hitting hold. Yeah, that's what you're no, supposed to do. This one. this one just I'd be willing to bet that this one is more accurate. The, the like, softer one? Like not accurate as in the way of accuracy of the ball, accuracy and measurement. Okay. So it's a finer measurement. And that one seems to measure just large because that one doesn't have so decimals. 69 right? again. Yeah. Uh, it's got a placeholder for it, but it's not there. All right, that's the difference in them, I think. All right, so the purple, uh, two years old, barely used, and these are supposed to start out at seventy-two. Do you um, figure out what these are for? Are these just the I don't know. Pushing handles. Uh, and that uh, that's down to sixty-nine was our highest punch, right? Sixty-nine was our highest. Sixty-nine point five. Sixty-six. Uh, I won't count the so sixty-three because that was probably a mistake. Point, Sixty-seven point eight. Yeah. So there you go. Rough estimate. I think we need to measure a resin ball now. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. Wait, where did the resin? Oh, it's on shoot, yeah. We're gonna use a brand new knockout. Anthony's probably shivering. On the, <laughs> you know. We're not gonna break it in. <laughs> Let's see, brand new knockout. We're gonna put it in the label. Just right in the label, yeah. so nothing happens. Let's see. I got the cool one again. All right. Yeah. You're also, right. if there is a company out there that sells higher quality durometers, yeah, because this one's only reading out of seven. Please send us so one. Let's use yours from now on. I'm glad I got two. Seventy-two. So it's close. That yeah. one's typically but, two off, but these, two to two and a half off. These should uh, a, a resin ball, even though it's a, a solid ball. This should be reading up to like eighty. Yeah, eighty somewhere. Yep. What if we check? Um, check that phase four. I'm gonna check this GB four. Or that. Just because I might buy one. <laughs> Need to know if it's legal, you know. That's right. I, this one's got to be harder. Is it not? This is what happens when you buy cheap durometers. Don't hold it down so far. Just get to the bottom and hit hold. 71 and a half. But you might be, you might be going too slow, too. I never thought about that. Yeah, I don't know. Do they have lessons for durometers? <laughs> Does anyone know? Is there a scientist watching? in the room? Do we have a scientist? How'd that go? 72.5. Disclaimer, these are not accurate. <laughs> Serious. This is disclaimer. all science. I wonder what percentage we should add to this. Yeah. Okay. 
a percentage. Yeah. I mean, I wish I knew what it was supposed to be hardness wise. Like what? It yeah, tested. we were looking what for this it. Batch tested. We were looking for it all wow. day today. And that yeah. brings up a point that I had that I wanted to make on the podcast specifically. These companies, since they have batch readings, they have all the batch readings. They have to. Mm-hmm. Why aren't they accessible to the public? I don't know. Because those batch readings are used to deem a ball legal, correct? So why can't the public see those? That should, I think it should be accessible. Because I could look up how hard a ball is supposed to be, and then I could test it. Right. Exactly what we're doing here. And say I'm going to a tournament. Yeah, like, I'm like, what, I don't know if mine's going to be hard enough. What if I don't a state know if or local tournament wanted to, wanted, to to do, wanted to do hardness testing? Ex- yes. And like, where would you find? Maybe, especially, maybe it is available. Especially on these year things now that all this is coming out. What if you wanted to find that list so that, um, you know, you could you could go ahead and do hardness testing? I do want to say things. I did stab myself seeing how Dude, this I is really push. sharp. Really, and I got I got the three point five before it punctured my skin. <laughs> I will say so. It seems like again, I've got thirty dollars durometers, and there's way more and scientific it's not that bad. and way more expensive. If I had to guess, it's it's probably like five to ten percent off. Yeah, I, I, I would if have I to, to say guess. so. But that's my general rule of thumb on Amazon products: <laughs> is you gotta expect them to be five percent less of what you want. Fair enough. Fair enough. At least I was expense, expecting really good. And uh, <laughs> listen, the box that this came in said precision instrument. Instrument. I mean, this box is kind of quite. <laughs> this could have been printed in a three D printer. It's quite possible, and is I think you're actually right. Here? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, read the product, man. So the interesting thing though is when we were punching them earlier, like they were reading, you know, high sixties. The even the black earthing or the black hammer was reading uh, high 60s or low 70s. Did they get so, softer or harder? Well, the black hammer was 78, or it's it comes in at 78 supposedly. So that's mine that, cold was 76, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was 74 when we just tested it, somewhere right. around there. Yep. 74, 72. Yep. I mean, it's almost room temperature. Now right? the the other thing that we didn't do that they do on tour is they they do a little mill. On the top of the ball, so that they're getting basically like Fresh. The, the true Fresh. surface, right? Um, whereas maybe we're, I mean, we could have done that, we could have, but you know, that's I don't really care about my, yeah, thing ball. but uh, but yeah, that would be, but then you're still not getting 10 different punches, you know what I mean? No, because you're, you're only getting one, so um, you know, a little, little bit dude, different. What they the battery, send you a battery yeah, yeah, dude, they came with batteries, batteries included, not not included. It's amazing. You gotta buy three more of these. <laughs> For no reason. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we just wanted to have a little fun, see see if uh, you know how different the urethanes are, yeah, um, softness wise. Too. Yeah. Um, I think, I think every pro shop should have like a legit drummer, not yeah. like a thirty dollar one off Amazon, right? But well, one that's accurate. I said I saw a couple that were um, legitimate, and they were quite expensive. Yeah, probably yeah. well into the hundreds. Yeah, maybe um, maybe a thousand or two. <laughs> But they're like real durometers. Listen, so. we're we're buying a desktop before we get that. Right? <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, I just I, you know, based off, especially based off uh, what Jeff had said when I said, ah, my no black way. hammer is never going down to yeah, seventy two or seventy one. Definitely didn't believe it. <laughs> so Jeff, you've been uh, vindicated, I guess, for a couple of minutes. Um, so why don't we get to our uh, bowler of the week? Yeah, shall we? Um, remember guys, if you want to be bowler of the week, go ahead and uh, click the link in the show notes. Um, and you can nominate yourself or a friend to be bowler of the week. Um, and you just fill out all that information there and, uh, we'll get it and then we'll pick who it will be this week. You may have, you might've guessed with his second 300, his first 800 series, all bowled on different pairs. And I think that was his first tournament win, no less. I don't know. At least singles. He may have won a team event here. Phil, there. correct me if you're wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, this week's Bowler of the Week, Phil James. Congratulations, Phil. Well you earned too. it. He's a uh, steady viewer yeah. Um, yeah. and a follower of the podcast and uh big TNC bowler. And he so. really loves bowling. Yes. He is one of those grinders. Mm-hmm. If he's mm-hmm. not happy, he's going to fix it. <laughs> That's right. Um, so, yeah, congratulations, Phil. You done good this weekend. Well done. Good bowling. 
Um, and remember, guys, if you would like to be Bowler of the Week or not, would like to nominate someone to be Bowler of the Week, click the link in the show notes uh, or in our bio on our social media pages. Fill out the form, and we will see if we'll pick you. Um, I think he owes us a drink tonight. Hmm. I like think? that. I think yeah. so. Yeah. We gave him a pat on the back. Yeah, I pulled next to him Monday, us a drink. and I didn't get a drink, but it's okay. Um, so, uh, that just about does it. That, uh, it's time for us to go bowling, I'd say. What? What? Already? What, do you want to, say, you want to hang out? It feels way longer when you're standing over there doing nothing. <laughs> um, for anyone that that's wondering, I, I move cameras. That is the extent Oh, yeah. Of click, my clack, job. click, click, clickety, clack, 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 yeah, clack, click, click, clack. I don't know if I can call this a job. What do you call I mean, it's not community service because <laughs> it's volunteer. Because it's volunteer. But like, what do you call that? Volunteer I mean, if work? you need to, me, if you need me to sign some papers for uh, community service hours, <laughs> I don't know if they. I think th- I think they're smarter than that. I think they'd know it's a previous thing, and they'd be like, mm, "I don't know if we're gonna oh, let this bro. guy sign." Although your name, keep your name. Uh, my name doesn't mean anything to anybody, but uh, no, my mom's name probably means more. Yeah, I, probably. Um, So, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, click the bell to get alerts. Uh, As always, catch us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, If you can't watch the show, download it on your favorite podcast outlet. Um, And uh, while you're doing that, please give us a five-star review. Um, If you want to give us some love on uh, our merch shop, check us out on Etsy. Um, And that link is in the show notes as well. Uh, If you'd like to sponsor the show, you can email us at downlanepod at gmail.com. Um, and I would like to say thank you to not only the producer, but the co-host, yeah, Austin Van Buren. Show. show. I do before, before you keep going, I know yeah, you love go. your outro. And no, no, no. Very go ahead. Good go, ahead. go, go, go. Uh, but Sea Lance had a question. Oh, for us. hey, oh, Sea Lance is back. Question, yeah, 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 I yeah. love it. Do your <laughs> theme balls older than 30 years still get grandfathered in? Uh, no. I'd fight for that. Well, only on the PBA. Don't if forget. If you only have on the a PBA. urethane ball that's 30 years old and you still fit in it without a redrill, I think you should be able to throw so, it. So Jack was looking for his axe. You couldn't find it. I know. And Anthony, we, where'd you put it? Yeah. Um, so uh, we wanted to test it to see you know, how different it might be. Um, but uh, no, two I think years, at a certain two years point, that's from, it. From back then, how soft do you think it could possibly get? Right. There's got to be a limit, right? It can't just um, keep getting softer. But my question I've always had about the softness of resin balls, not to get off topic here. Sure. I want to get this in because who knows what we talk about. We got time. We got time. We got time. Nothing but time. Resin balls, generally, when you leave them outside of a bag, like you're supposed to store them in a bag, temp controlled room, Mm -hmm. no moisture, this, that, and the other. Um, But generally, when you have your resin balls, especially polished resin balls that generally are very hard from the start, when they crack, it's usually because the cover has shrunk a little bit from my knowledge when it when that cover shrinks is how does it how is it getting softer how is that cover on that ball getting softer mm. if it's shrunk and yeah. cracked uh, uh, yeah if the molecules if it's are brittle coming enough together to crack, yeah Interesting. i mean at the same time like because you feel how soft the urethane ball is and and we felt i mean the purple one obviously probably pretty close to being illegal yeah um with a real durometer probably passed by one or two points right um, you feel how soft that is, but then you feel a phase four or a GB four, and how does that get soft enough to, yeah. to be illegal? I'm not a scientician, but uh, I, I would tell. have, <laughs> <laughs> but I would have to venture a guess that uh, um, the molecules in there uh, do mag- magic okay. things. Okay, I have no idea. <laughs> cracks that's what i know I, yeah, the fact i know, I know is it my cracks. resin balls yeah. crack and i've not had a sanded ball crack yet i wish i could answer that question but i'm not a chemist I'm or just, a, just something yeah. i've noticed and i'm very terrible at storing bowling balls so it is 100 percent my fault but well that bag supposedly that little, little shiny bag thing that you roll up and stuff your ball into and that's supposed to draw the oil out and all that good stuff i don't really know if it I've works but I don't even know what it's called. We're gonna have to get one. I tried to get the kid on the show, but we're gonna have didn't to answer me. My urethane ball is caked. Yeah, when but it, but it doesn't uh, but it doesn't absorb the oil. The the it's made for like the resin balls that that absorb the oil. It's supposed to draw the oil back out. Oh, yeah. It's not it's not like it's baking it, but it's like it's almost kind of supposed to replace you from I'd having. Be interested to see what it is. Yeah. I'm gonna look it up after the show. Yeah. All right. So back to business. Thank you, Austin. 
for joining me You're tonight. Welcome. It was fun. It was crazy. Hell of a job. Hell of a job. Um, thank you to Jack Skate, the proprietor of Town and Country Lanes. Anthony, you know what? Enjoy your vacation because uh, should we say? I don't thank- know if you needed it, but whatever. Should we say thank. Should we say thank you to Janelle, anyways? Yeah, thanks, Janelle. Thanks. You did well. <laughs> Uh, thank you to my family, Stephanie, Zach, and Ethan. We'll see you guys next week. This is Downlane Podcast.